being able to cook and prepare together. Karagre Vasate Lakshmihi Karamule Saraswati Karamare to go in the ha Prabhate Karandarshanam Om Shanti 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 Hmm Okay Always sets me right. Good. It's such a pretty chant, too. It is a very lovely chant. So we're honoring that our hands have the five elements in it, just like our food does, just like our doshas do. Mm -hmm. So this one is we're honoring that prosperity and abundance is inherent within everything, always even when we don't think we're abundant, when we think we don't have a lot. The essence inside abundance, that's Lakshmi. She's all about the glam, yes. right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then Saraswati, which is the bent one here, she's all about the flow in us. The bent one? See is it bent? It? Yes, the bent one. Yeah, bends. She's all about the flow. Usually she's pictured with a, you know, gorgeous playing a stringed instrument. She's the flowing of the river, being able not to be so rigid, to kind of flow with it, be creative. She's in there too, even when we don't think so. And then at the base of the fingers is the earth, the earth energy, mother earth, for which, my gosh, you know, we're eternally really grateful. Where will we be? We wouldn't be on this planet. We wouldn't have food. So we're honoring that. And then we honor the beauty of our own hands. We kind of gaze at them, the last part. You look at your hands. You know, if you don't like your hands, you kind of embrace what they are, you know, in the moment, whatever. Take a deep breath and you're honoring yourself. And then you're saying, peace, peace. So that's what we just did. You can do anything you want for me. It reminds me of my teacher and it helps me to, to do this. So, um, Gail, were you, able to, were you able to take the um, test? Um, you know what, I just took it um, in my mind because I've taken this so many times. Okay. But I'm, 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 I'm checking it off right now. Well, you're, uh, you're Vata, right? Are I'm you? Vata and I, I'm, I've been Vata Pitta but I see myself becoming more Vata. Okay. Yeah. Maybe go so I'll have to count them up. Okay, go ahead. Did everybody else take it? Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Uh, Teresa, can you unmute yourself? Is that possible? I, I'm having- Thank you. Can There's, you hear me now? I can hear you now, Teresa, welcome. Uh, hi, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, very thankful to be here and yes i did take the quiz and um i've also had my uh doshas diagnosed in the past too but do you want to reveal um <laughs> on the, this quiz it came out more vada i can give you the exact numbers but in the past when i've seen ayurvedic doctors they've diagnosed me as uh uh pitta vata Okay. And two different ones said Pitta Vata. Um, but I tend to be more Pitta in the hot summer months and more Vata in the winter months. So, you know, which is like part of the seasonal thing. And uh, when there's more stress in life, like in the last several months, I would say just Vata goes crazy. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So by oh. Doshi. And the quiz that you were sent was so minimal. You know, it didn't go into the in-depth of it. So. Mm -hmm. And Deborah, do you want to share what your dosha is? Um, I tend to be between Pitta and Vata. And um, this time was, um, I can't remember. I, for, I forgot to bring my, my paper, but um, I, I tend to be more Pitta in the winter and more Vata in the summer. Okay. But that but that can change from year to year, right, Paul? 
Generally, no. It can change during change of life, like when you're a child, when you're a teenager, when you're menopausal, and when you're postmenopause. You're going through different, like right now I'm postmenopausal. I'm in my vata years, even though I'm pitta vata. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm more prone to vata imbalances. When you're younger, you're more prone to pitta. And when you're really baby, child, you're more prone to kapha. And as Teresa is pointing out, right now in the world, and all, all of us being spiritual and empathic at some level, we're picking up all the imbalances of the vata dosha and a little bit of the pitta because we're having a heat wave. The country is on fire in so many ways. And so we pick up on it and it puts us out of balance. So sometimes it's not just because, oh, I ate too many hot peppers or something. You could also be picking up. What's yeah, going that's true. Yeah. And we're also in the fire element of the elements. So it's really high fire season. Yeah. So I think the best preventative for all of us is to really understand how the elements work together within a dosha and what are the opposites of those things <clears throat> that's what i'd like to share with you today because i think it's pretty profound you know an ayurveda opposites cure and like creates like so if vata is all about if you think of a vata air and and space you have a lot of freedom you know and so that's where let's look at it as the imbalance would be forgetfulness you know you've got i don't know where i left my keys <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what time i'm supposed to be there you know you've got all this space to be open and it tends to be air and ether coming together it tends to be very dry like you'll notice that on a windy day your garden needs more water than on non-windy days so the wind and the air dries things out that's a vata element. You might notice that your skin is even dry now, even though it's hot. That would be dehydration, you know, the vata thing. So how, what's the opposite of those? What's the opposite of dry? Moist, really. Moist. Kapha? Like kapha moist? More kapha. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. So you think of those opposites to balance you out when you're feeling the imbalance, you have to know when you're in balance, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't keep running to the doctor all the time. Uh, so it's good to know the signs. I feel particularly vata right now. And so I've been really noticing what my taste buds want and don't want. And normally I would want to pick on something dry and crunchy. And these past couple of days, I noticed like, Ugh, that's disgusting. I don't want dry and crunchy. I mean, really like an aversion. And I think it's like our body's just telling us. So mm -hmm. have you noticed that in your life about this being drawn to something and, and not? I have, yes. Gail? I have. Yeah, yeah. Noticed. So those are cues for us. Um, before I get deeper into that, I wanted to just say, if you want to go ahead and boil your water for your tea, this way while we're sitting, we could be hydrating and having some moistness. So Paul, I have a question for you. Sure. Because you specifically said, you know, fennel seeds, you know, the mint, honey, and I, I also put fennel seeds and ginger in mine. Is there a specific reason why that combination? It's very tasty, by the way. And I put a whole thing of ginger in. Is that okay? Or do you suggest another way of doing ginger? It's only okay if it's okay with you. You're going to have to see how it feels. For me personally, ginger too much in this heat is too hot. Mm. But mm. I tend to have a very vata digestion, so it could be too heating for me. Mm -hmm. 
if you're feeling a little cold, you know, you might need the heat. I do feel cold. Um, fennel, it tends to be sweet. It tends to be on the sweet side if you don't have an aversion to yeah. that licorice Some people do not like that licorice thing. Uh, so you can go for the mints. The mints are very relaxing. They're mm. also uh, a little bit moist. And some of them are sweet. But it, it came recommended in a lot of the vata uh, teas. It's not yeah, it's delicious. It's delicious. It's not the end all, you know. It's good, right? Yeah, it's very good. And the honey gives you a little bit of that kapha. Too much honey is going to cause too much kapha. Mm. But this heat, I wouldn't worry about it, unless you, you know, taking it like sp spoonfuls. <laughs> but a little bit is nice. So, <coughs> go ahead and boil your water. Gail, you have your tea. I have my tea. I have a, a ginger turmeric tea. I have this, um, which a friend turned me on to, and I'm just loving it. Abatera. I mean, it was a gift. Yeah. But you, you could do it yourself at home by just adding turmeric and ginger to your honey. Oh, nice. There's not oh, a lot good. of here in it. Oh, wonderful. And. Also for the vata, because um, the vata is, is also about aesthetics. I mean, all doshas are, but in particular. So you want to have beautiful things that you're eating from and cooking mm. with. Yeah. You don't have to spend a lot of money. But you don't want like something broken or cracked or it has a bad memory like, oh, you know. <laughs> There, that's really pretty. You can drink out of a out of a bowl. You can drink your tea. Because how the aesthetics affect us internally is that it's either going to raise our joy, which is going to um, invigorate our tissues, or it's going to depress all of that and make us more dried out and grouchy. <laughs> so uh, Mother Maya was big on that. Nice little cup, oh, yeah. nice little teapot, and you just give it to yourself. Or that's a very lovely teapot. Yes, and you surround yourself with a few things that make you happy, that bring you joy. Yeah. That's almost more important than anything. <clears throat> basis. Yeah. Teresa, would you say that? Uh, yes. I was going to ask, doesn't Mother Maya want, ideally, if you can, you want each meal to have appeal to sight, uh, sound, smell, taste, and even touch? Like all five senses are engaged with whatever dish or meal, as best you're able to do that? Absolutely. Before you came on, we did the hand blessing. You know, to, to just start to engage in that, that inner rasa, that inner joy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, visually, using all of your organs of perception. As best as you can. I mean, you've got a household of kids running around and in-laws and all this. It might be difficult to find that still point. But still, even involved in that, like being involved in the world, we can still do a little chant, bring our hands together, have a beautiful cup, you know, do the best we can. Um, do you all live alone? No, you're not living alone. No, I have a partner. I have my husband. Okay. And my dog. And the dog. That's good. So somebody's coming in. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is good when you're alone because then you, you're on your own time, but mm -hmm. with someone that's conscious with you and knows your practice, you know, you can go ahead and do it together. So uh, somebody came on and I'm not sure who it is if you want to identify yourself and mm -hmm. unmute yourself when you have a chance. That would be great. I see that you're here by iPhone. I mean, that's my favorite.
Uh, maybe they can't unmute because they're on an iPhone instead of a computer. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. So whoever you are, welcome. <laughs> and wherever you are, maybe get your cup of tea ready, boil your water, uh, or have a nice cup of tea with you. That's what we're doing at this point. Hmm. Mm. So what we're cooking today is so quick and easy, it's mm. not going to take an hour and a half to do it. So we're gonna, we are going to converse a lot. But first, let's get going with our, um, our zucchini. Mm. Yeah, so does everyone have their zucchini? Yes. Good. I tend to use little baby zucchinis because they have less seeds in them. Mm -hmm. And I usually only cook for one in my house. So yeah. you know how the big gig gigantic ones are. So the little ones don't have a lot of seeds and that might be good, Mary Jane, for your tummy. You too. Um, earlier today, they show you how you can just he seed it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing I can do with cucumbers too. Exactly. Or you can cook the cucumber too. I never cooked a cucumber. Yeah. It's, it's quite. I, I never cooked a cucumber. It's really delicious. Oh. Very nice. Wow. Oh. So um, you can think of this vegetable as, as having, I guess that's the same person as having a north and a south instead of an east and a west. It's kind of elongated and long, which is a typical vata element uh, when something is long and thin, if you think of vata. Um, you can't tell right now, unless you've had the experience of zucchini, if it's dry or not. Mm -hmm. Having had the experience, it kind of, kind of looks dry on the outside. Hmm. It has some of the vata elements in it. Okay. Now, you don't have to do this every time you cook, obviously. You might have a dinner party that you have to get the food done. Uh, but maybe for the first time, cut it from a north-south, and then we're going to open it up and look at the lifeline. Now, the recipe calls for rounding it. But we're going to do half moons. So whenever you're ready... I'm going to put this down. I'm going to cut from the top to the bottom and open it. And so when you open it, and you can see that there's not many seeds, right? No, not many. And can you see that there's moisture on it? Yes. Yeah. Nice so and wet. It's very watery, which is, it doesn't even feel heavy enough to be watery, but it is a very watery hmm. uh, vegetable and it's very balancing to air and ether. It's very balancing to vata. So now, if, uh, Teresa, do you have a larger zucchini, an older zucchini? Does it I'm just, just watching the food part. Okay. I'll be an observer. Debbie, do you have a zucchini? I do, and I cut it already. Did it have a lot of seeds? No. Didn't have a... So if you had a lot of seeds, you could just go right down the middle. Scoop it out. Scrape your seeds out. Okay. And then put the seeds in the, you know, compost. Are seeds not good to eat? Some people cannot digest the seeds. It's oh. irritating to their... Uh, Mary Jane can't have seeds. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mary Jane. <laughs> um, <thank you. laughs> Diverticulitis. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would do it. Yeah. Well, she'll send the seed to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go ahead and cut the second one. And the idea about looking at the lifeline is remembering that this vegetable has given its life. Yeah. It's been what? It has given its life. life to us. Yes. Yeah. It's got chi for sure. Right? And so we're taking that in with 
oh, thank you. What a, what a gift, you know? And that, again, picks up joy in us and the thankfulness. That's why you do that sadhana. Okay. So I'm also going to cut it into half moons. Once you do your life sign, then you can cut into half moons. Half moons. Oh, half moon shapes. have our little I put everything in there so we have this nice what's the next thing Mary Jane we've got to do some ghee in the pot right yes. oh yes can I Moist. use coconut oil because I don't have any ghee coconut oil is fine it's heating which is why uh, I don't personally use it in the summertime but if you're okay with that and this is ghee made from the last full moon. It's in its own special. Oh, container. nice. Mm. And its own spoon. <clears throat> May I ask what are other non heating oils that people could use if you don't have ghee and you don't want to use a hot coconut oil? You can use safflower oil or olive oil or olive oil or sunflower oil. Okay. Do any of those appeal to you? Yes, I yep. love olive oil. Yeah, me too. That's, I use that as a dressing. <clears throat> Can you tell that this is a moon ghee? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's more, it's a light yellow. Mm. If you do a new moon ghee, ghee and try it, it's a little bit amber. It's still oh. good. It's still good, but this is a full moon ghee. Wow. You should do a ghee thing. Um, a ghee thing. A ghee <laughs> yeah. thing, yeah. A ghee class. You did one at a workshop we were at. That was fun, wasn't it? That was fun. We'd all have to do it though, because Gail wouldn't be able to get the experience of the smell and right. You know, yeah, you'd have to do it together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could get one of these little, you know, one burner thingamajiggies. It's an electric one burner. Are you talking to me? Yeah. You see this? Yeah. You could get. I know what that is. You know what it is, right? I do. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't want to disturb your family and you wanted to cook, you could just get one of these and. Yeah. Cook. Oh. Somebody's having a hard time. Oh. All right. I'm sorry you're having a hard time getting on. Okay, so the ghee is melting, right, Mary Jane? Is that it? If you could read me the. Uh... Uh, one teaspoon ghee, one cup of water, and a quarter teaspoon salt. Don't we put in the zucchini now? Hmm? Don't we put the zucchini in the... You know what? Let me get that up. Uh, in a medium slice, put the zucchini in the ghee over medium heat until tender, okay. which is about five to seven minutes. All right. So the... Uh, the medium slice, so cook the zucchini in the ghee over medium heat until tender. Yep. Then you add the water. Yes. Then you add it. Now, think of this recipe as a base, meaning it's not complicated, but if you want to add other things to it, feel free. You Such know, as? You might want to do your own um, masala. Maybe you want to do some cardamom. Maybe you want to do something else with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to put some spinach in or something or kale. So feel free to mm -hmm. use this as the base. Hmm. Okay? It's a simple dish. Very simple. Oh, it is. Now, 
Debbie, do you have yours in now? Is it sweating? It is your uh, zucchini sweating? No, it hasn't worked out enough yet. Okay. But I want to say that there is nothing like the smell of ghee. Nothing. Oh, I oh, love it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Even I never, I never made my own ghee. I, I buy it organic, and you know. We should so do. Like you should do. A, you've got to do a set. It's so much fun making ghee. That would be great. Yeah. It would be great. Easy. Another and if, time. Even if you don't eat it, you know, some people have health reasons why they don't want to eat it. Maybe weight gain or whatever. It's not vegan, oh, no. you know, oh, it's okay. from a cow. There could yeah. be issues with it. But even if you smell it, there's healing qualities to oh, it. Yes, yeah. It's very rich. And you could use it on your skin too, right? Yes. And in your mm -hmm. nose. I know you know the Korea about doing neti pot, right? Yes. You you finish shopping, you know, you've got the alcohol, you've got all this washing down of stuff. You right. can't feel yucky. Yes. So it's good to oil in there. Just put a little bit in the nostrils. Mm -hmm. oh. so you know what I use? I use NASA oil, N-A-Y-A-S-A, -A -A, oil. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Gary. Yeah, that's what I use. Okay. And I need it. Okay, so that is going. Um, let's see. What we could also add to this would be things like uh, kale or spinach. Mm. Um, if you like the sweet potato realm, you can use things like yams and sweet potato. That's very creamy and yummy. Um, other kinds of squash, if you like other kinds of squash, is also good in there. Uh, pumpkin, that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, delicious. And just say you didn't want to have it as a soup. You could just saute this now. Maybe put it over some steamed something. Uh, quin not quinoa, uh, rice. Oh, uh, that would be me. Spaghetti squash, um, brown rice, things like that. Wild rice, soaked. Uh, buckwheat groats. So it's, it's going to be a soup because we're going to add water. But remember, this is just a base. You can make it into a, a vegetable dish or you could make it into a soup. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, my water. And we'll just let that gather itself. So all the bubbling and sizzling has diminished because we've added cold water to it. So the heat's going to bring the water back up um, to a degree where it's going to cook a little bit more for about five to seven minutes. And that's done, basically. You're pretty much finished with that. You have to keep it covered while it's cooking? I'm going to keep it covered while it's cooking. Um, I want, I use such tiny zucchini that it's not really the recipe. The recipe was calling for medium, but mm. these I got from the garden and they were teeny tiny. So I want, just want it to steam off a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And, and plus it's hot in this room and I don't feel like having the steam. Oh, the steam. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you passing out. <laughs> Where's Paul? <Paula? laughs> May I ask what part of the country you're in, Paula? Uh, I'm in the Catskill. Well, the lower Catskills. I'm about half an hour from Ananda. Oh, that's a beautiful ashram near there. Okay. Um, 
do you um is it cold or hot where you are or just comfortable it's uh very very hot right now even at 539 it's 86 degrees and and the humidity is quite close to that so mm. very what what do they call it the triple h hazy hot and humid kind of yeah thing. It's quite unusual to have it be this hot so soon upstate. Yeah. They said it was going to be a very hot summer. Yeah, it, it's like the lazy, hazy days of summer in August. That's yeah, how it feels. Yeah. 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 And I'm, it, going out, I'm going out to South Carolina next week, and their heat index is 100. <laughs> yeah. Just, It'll be hot. Just be careful. Yeah, be yeah. careful. Yeah. I wanted to go over one thing with you. I'm trying to pull it up here. So let's look at some, some of the spices. The things I'm talking about, I am happy to forward all of this to you, which is a food <laughs> list. Thank you. Including culinary spices, teas, and all of that. I'll just forward it to everyone's email. You're welcome to use it. Thank you. I've credited the source. But just say you wanted to add something to this more than just what's in it. You want to focus on sweet and warming herbs and spices. So let's talk about what they would be. We mentioned ginger, right? Yeah. Ginger, right. besides being warming, it has some other qualities. But what other herb or spice can you think of that's warming? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Cinnamon mm -hmm. is very warming. Cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Very warming. From a bar. What about, what about turmeric? What is it? Rosemary? Turmeric. Turmeric. Yes. Oh, turmeric. Turmeric is not in the family of sweet and warm. Okay. You can use a little bit at the end for vata. In other words, it's not the predominant, but little bit is good because it gives you that taste that we need to balance, not too much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and we're talking about vata right now. So for other doshas, it'd be okay. Yeah. Is basil good for sweet and warm, basil? Basil is great, yes. Basil is sweet and warm. Basil. How about nutmeg? Uh, nutmeg, yes. Mm. Very good. Yeah. Fennel, right? We have that in our tea, some of us. Mm. Um, cardamom. 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 Yes. I love cardamom. I'll give you a hint. There's a lot of C. A lot of the spices begin with C. We have cinnamon. Cumin. Cardamom. Cumin and coriander. Cumin, coriander, yeah. Little bit of clove. And uh, caraway. Oh, caraway. Yeah. And then you have your licorice -y kind of things, the fennel, the actual licorice root, if you wanted to make it a little bit sweet. Uh, anise, allspice. Anise. Uh, for the greens, you can use tarragon, uh, thyme, and sage. And sages come in different flavors. I just picked up a pineapple sage. Ooh. Has a nice subtle pineapple-y kind mm -hmm. of taste. So that's an example of some, some things that help to balance that air and that spice uh, space. Now, would we combine those? I mean, would I use, um, say, cinnamon and thyme at the same time? You know what? You have to try it. Okay. You have to try it unless you see if I like it. Yeah. Yes, cinnamon. You don't want to use too much. It's quite overpowering. Yeah. So you start with a little bit, take, take a little taste, you know, take a little flavoring. Maybe make it into a tea first. 
Um, but orange peel without the pipe, you know, the pipe is the white stuff. If you mixed an orange peel with thyme, that might be a lovely kind of a. Sounds good. <clears throat> wow. So this is the idea about cooking in a space where you're relaxed and you're clear so that you can really, you know, have, an, have a relationship with these things and know from your own knowing, oh, this is good for me, this is not so good for me. Yeah? Yeah. That's the best thing. Like the coconut oil smells really good. Oh, I bet it does. Yeah. Mm. All right, we'll get back to that. And again, uh, I am going to send that to you, what I'm looking, <clears throat> so that you'll have it. But when you think of balancing the vata, you're thinking of things that are warm and cozy mm -hmm. and, and creamy. Mm -hmm. like Mary Jane was eating some uh, oatmeal with a, maybe a nut milk if you're if you're vegan, uh, very mm. creamy and warm, delicious, or rice yeah. pudding, something oh, like. Oh, yeah. I love rice, rice pudding. pudding. Yeah, me too. Cinnamon. Heavy things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I had I had oatmeal today with coconut. Oh. Heated coconut um, milk. Oh, that, oh, that sounds good. With a little bit of cinnamon in it. And, and then I put some nuts on it too. If you have problems digesting um, grains, even if you're vata, you can always sprout them first overnight or a couple of days, get them sprouted and they're far more digestible that way. I, I do get the gluten-free oatmeal because I'm gluten-free. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. good. How long do you soak them if you're soaking them overnight to mm. be sufficiently sprouted? Like for two days? Mm. I've soaked the growths to make a, a sprouted seed bread and I've just done it overnight. Wow. You know, like about 10, 12 hours. I've soaked them. I haven't necessarily sprouted them. I don't have that serious an issue with my uh, digestion. Okay. But if I had a hard, harder time, I would say probably how long would it take to sprout in this weather, in this heat, you could probably get three, three days of sprout. Mm. Right? Teresa, are you mm. sprouting things now? Um, no, that's why I want to learn about it. I wasn't quite sure timing and how much to do, for how long to do. Yeah. Um, I would like to do that. You could put a YouTube video on. We're not doing that now, but I've done it even on a piece of uh, Scott towel. I put some seeds and just moistened them, mm -hmm. and then they sprouted in a few days. So you don't need any special fancy equi equipment for that. But look what at kind it. of seeds would you use? Oh, I've done all kinds of seeds. I've done raw sunflower seeds. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I've even done things like beans, sprouted certain beans, like aduki, aduki beans. The sprouting makes it more digestible, okay. I find. So. All right, let's start with um, all the soup. Check your soup. How's it going? It's pretty delicious there. I'm going to turn mine off. I don't know how yours is. Soft enough? It's getting soft, yeah. Okay. If you keep the cover on it, it'll keep steaming. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make this very simple avocado and cucumber salad. Oh, avocados. What kind of taste are avocados? What kind of texture are they? Creamy. And smooth. Creamy and smooth. And that is the opposite of vata, which is going to be balancing because the opposite of, of something will help to balance it. Opposites cure. Opposites cure. Yeah. Um, 
And for this particular dressing, I'm using some safflower oil. That's my choice. And we're gonna do this summer spice mix. So some of you cannot do the seeds, but you can certainly grind them enough so that they're powder, or you can use the powder itself. We're gonna mm. use coriander seeds, cumin seeds, fennel seeds, and turmeric powder and cardamom powder. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Mr. Pot. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> Talk to the food. Talk to the food. <laughs> they like that. <laughs> what, like if the if the food, what if the food starts talking back? <laughs> yeah. Run. <laughs> Hopefully it has some wise things to tell us. Yeah, yeah. Eat me. Don't eat me. <laughs> eat me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Hmm. Also, I, I found this wonderful, um, on my, my hiking uh, camping trip last week, I found oh. this down by the, the river. It's got this nice indentation. Yeah. Yeah. And look at this. It's like a natural one. Get yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Water wow. and pestle. Water and pestle. So you. anytime you're at the beach, Mary Jane, or whoever is going to the beach, Maybe you're going for a hike. Yeah. Ask permission. That's, that's neat. It is kind of neat, isn't it? I'm going to use it for some um, ginger, I think. Yeah. I like that. Wow. Yeah, you don't have to spend a, an arm and a leg for these things. <clears throat> it's nice because that's all natural. It's all natural. I don't know about the seeds would probably be flying everywhere. Oh, that's yeah, true. you're right. Because it's true. not in a container. Yeah, it's not contained. So here's yeah. the spice mix, except for the two powders. And in this recipe, it calls for dry heat. Sometimes you use a little bit of ghee or oil, uh, but yeah. in this one, it's dry. This is cast iron, and it's a tiny one, which it's is cute. very cute. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And it doesn't weigh a ton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because those other ones are so heavy. Mm. Where did you find that, Paula? Oh my gosh, this is... is oh, that's around a long time? Yeah, this is around okay. a long time. Probably from the 80s. Mm -hmm. and I really can't recall when, when where I got okay. it. Okay. You should be able to find these things. Yeah, I'm sure. I've yeah. seen them, yeah. A little one, that's small. Yeah. Okay. So the reason that we heat them first is to awaken them. We're gonna wake them up by heating them first. Okay. And they're only gonna be in here a few minutes. Now how you know they're done is by smelling. You'll notice that they become more aromatic, fragrant you'll notice a difference in the uh, color of them. So it's good to pay attention to how they look now when they're not done, and then watch them transform. May I ask how high is your flame or are you keeping it really low? Uh, this is an electric one, a burner. So I have it on two and a half if you okay. had it at home on the flame, you probably want it on medium uh, to low, low to medium, not too high, because you want to give it a few minutes to become fragrant. Thank you. Know, I, I've got, I have cardamom pods. Can I use those instead of the powder? Uh, Does it matter? Sure. So I'm starting to smell it now after a couple of minutes. Starting to smell very fragrant. Now, for the spice mix, instead of the seeds, I can use the powder, like the coriander, cumin, and fennel. Yes, you should, given the itis situation. Yeah. 
So yeah. I would put, so for the coriander, cumin, and fennel, being it's the powder, um, then I don't have to dry roast. Well, you don't have to dry roast. We don't really know if they dry roasted them or not. I don't know what kind of spices you're buying. <laughs> Um, but you can certainly put them in a little pan with a little bit of moisture, oil or ghee, just to, yeah. it, you know, just to heat them up and wake them up, you know? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is basically done. Mm. Oh, smells pretty good. Uh, I'm going to put them into my mortar and pestle here. <clears throat> mm. Getting hungry. <laughs> This on this so we don't so we have them in here <clears throat> can you can you use something else besides this yes you could use a coffee grinder if you want but the grassroots ayurveda is a the benefit of using your hands and using something like this is that it awakens within us good things, good memories. Um, it enhances our ability to smell, to taste, to feel. So it's very healing at a deep level to do this. And you could make a whole bunch of it and then put it in a nice jar and then you don't have to do this every time you cook. Yeah. <clears throat> How long do they last if you put them in the jar like that? in the dark in a cool place i would say a few months maybe up to six mm. as long as it's you know kept in a cool place mm. thank you uh, that's all gonna vary right yeah so i'm just gonna hold this up for a minute but it's this sound <clears throat> Mm. that is awakening our consciousness. Yeah. So the first time I used the mortar and pestle, it was, it's done in an air of spiritual, so no one is talking, everyone in the room, there were 25 of us learning this from Mother Maya. It was very still, and all we heard was this, different sounds depending on who had what kind of a mortar and pestle. Mm. And I kept thinking of my grandmother. It just um, sort of came into my head. Yeah. Good things. And it helps us. It's like a moving meditation, I like to call it. Mm -hmm. Even the feel. <clears throat> when you, you know. It, yeah. Mm. And so it's best, so it's best to relax when you're doing it, Deb. Take a couple of breaths. <laughs> take a couple of breaths. So it looked like I was like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's now I know why the cardamom seeds are really big. <laughs> They're hard to break up, but they smell um, so good. It smells good. Oh, and the cardamom is so nice. Yeah, you can you can also circle or you can tap. And now it's taking on a whole nother aroma. Now mm. we've got another aroma going on. Do you circle clockwise or count counterclockwise or does it not matter? Um, I heard a couple of things. Mother Maya never said, but a couple of my uh, Iyengar teachers said that circular to the right uh, clockwise was more about moving into the present and the future. And clockwise 
was about connecting to the ancestors and looking at the past. <clears throat> what did you hear? Um, well, that makes sense. I haven't heard that, but, um, but you said, but I would think at, during, you know, Pit, Pitra Paksha, the uh, uh, ancestor uh, honoring festival in the autumn, Yes. It's usually like what, late September? That would probably be a better time to do counterclockwise then, right? That would make sense if you're following that philosophy, yeah. Again, I think this stuff was lost. So unless the teacher is passing it on, one would only have to try it and practice it and see for yourself what rings true for you. So let me say that now it's, I mean, it's not like a powder that you'd buy in the store, but it's a lot more powdery than it was when I started. Probably not enough for your belly, Mary Jane, but yeah. I'm going to go with that, that this is okay. Yeah. And so now to that, I'm now going to add the turmeric and the cardamom powder that they talked about. It would be nice to put on the zucchini. Oh, yeah. Enjoy that. Yeah. Again, this is a, a variation on a theme. You could either store this as your spice or dry spice or making with your soups or veggies, or you can make it into a salad dressing. Mm -hmm. Let you be creative. Yeah. Be creative. Well, you're making it a salad dressing today, right? Yes. And because it's only me, I'm not going to use much of this. I mean, this is a lot of spice. Yeah. Uh, but I'm only cooking for me today. So let's put that aside for a minute. And look at our cucumber. So Similar to the squash, we have a very vata type vegetable. It's long, thin. We don't know what it tastes like. We're gonna pretend we've never had a cucumber. Looks kind of dry on the outside, but we don't really know yet. And it feels a lot heavier than that squash, but it's also bigger than the squash. So let's give that a cut. And now this is a much older cucumber. You can see it has a lot more seeds. But do you see the moistness? Yeah. Yeah. So that's very good to counteract the dryness of vata. And if you don't like the seeds, you would just go down the middle and scrape the seeds out. And then what you have left is the flesh. Yeah. Um, because this is organic, I'm, I don't mind the skin, but if you, if you don't like the skin or if it's GMO or something, maybe that's the only one you got, take the skin off okay. and guard it. Let's see, how are we going to cut these? Okay. Oh, cut lengthwise, then into large chunks. Yeah. I'm only going to use half. You can cut them any way your little heart desires. Let's say that. Get into your creativity. into chunks. I kept the skin on. I don't mind the skin. Mm -hmm. And I'm only doing a half because it's only for me. My dad will definitely not eat this. <laughs> okay. Unless it has garlic and olive oil on it. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> tepidino? Is that the Tepidino side? That's the Tepidino side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. Avocado. avocado. What Dry outside. 
dry outside? What kind of like, shape is it? Oh, um, like a pear oval. shape. Oval? It's like my body. It's a, it's, it's a kappa shape. It's round and full. It's round and full. A little heavy. And it's, well, this one is ripe because you can feel that it's softer. Mm -hmm. And for vata, you don't want to have it raw. You want to have it. Oh, good to know. Is there a certain way you cut it? I just cut it down the middle and then I turn it and voila. You cut it down the middle. Nice. Cut it down the middle. Yeah. And then kind of wiggle it a little bit and pop it out. And the the, uh, the nut stays on one side and reveals that beautiful, creamy texture. My, nut, my nut's kind of small. You what? My nut's small. Aww. Yeah, small nut. Sure. <laughs> hey, nut. Remember in the 60s when we used to try to grow that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. Did you and they would that? sprout all over. Did you? Yes. I never had luck with it. You never had luck with them? No. You know, I was a Montessori teacher, so I had, we did it over and over again. So, you know, over and over. <laughs> so you had to have some sprouting. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to get a Montessori lesson from you. <laughs> All right. Who has secrets about how to get the avocado out? I'm going to do it this way. Share yours, please. Oh, look at that. I just take a, a spoon and yeah. take it out with the spoon. Mine's really soft. I don't know. Mm. Just kind of pop it out and it's already cut. Mm. It doesn't really matter. That's good. Uh -oh. A little Him Himalayan salt, and and you're you're done. Ready to go. <sighs> mm. I'm sorry, Gail. I'm licking my fingers in front of you. You're not eating yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. Okay, I'm only gonna do a half a one. Uh, you could use a little bit of lemon, tiny bit of lemon. That will also help to keep the avocado from not browning. Mm. Just a little lemon, it tends to be too puckery, too much of it is not good for vata. Oh. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of our, um, of our uh, spice mixture and I'm going to put a little bit of safflower oil in it and I'm going to mush it around and make the, make the dressing. Now remember, I'm only doing this tiny little bit, so I don't have much. But I've mixed it around with the oil and then I'm just going to drizzle it over the top. looks pretty good. It smells really good. I'm gonna have to taste Miguel, I'm sorry. Mm. Very tasty. Mm. Mm. How much oil did you use? Well, I used a tablespoon. Mm. Are you going to put a dash of honey? Um, I had too much honey today, but oh, yeah. okay. I would, if I did, I would take a little bit of this honey that I have with the uh -huh. turmeric in it, and yeah. I would put it in just a little bit of warm, warm water, maybe a tablespoon, just kind of mix it around. Oh, nice. And drizzle it. Oh, yeah, very you nice. Do that. Or you okay. can add your Himalayan salt. I'm not using salt today. Okay. That is done. So we get back to the soup for a minute. You can either do, well, you could do a lot of things. So if you add the rice, you can put this over rice, or you can 
make it into a soup. I'm going to use a, an old fashioned potato masher, mm -hmm. but you can certainly use an immersion blender if you want to do that. Everybody knows what an immersion blender is, right? Yeah, I just discovered them this year. They're great. They do. It, it just makes everything wonderful. Multiplied, yeah. Well, the salad dressing is really good on the avocado cucumber. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good. Paula, of those warming. Um, properties herbs, sweet warm herbs and spices which ones are the least aggravating to pitta in the hot season the least aggravating uh cardamom uh, cilantro coriander ginger would be a little aggravating if your pitta is up yeah i feel ginger is too hot definitely this time of year yeah um what what about uh, cumin? A little bit of cumin is good. You know, not being the predominant, but being kind of a backdrop of a kind of a taste. Yeah. But cardamom, cardamom and coriander, definitely. Okay. Yes. And the fresh cilantro is very cooling. Don't you Does think? Can, yeah, cilantro is always really cooling and it's nice with avocado too. Well, the basil is still a little too hot, you think, or not? Um, you know, I don't really like basil. I find it, I, I just don't like the taste of it as a pitta person. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me, actually, because everybody loves basil. But I, I find it too, too strong. It's too much for me. It's got too much of a flavor and it overpowers things. And so I tend not to use it, mm. especially when it's fresh. What mm. do you think? I'd rather use parsley or cilantro. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Me, me? Teresa? Yeah. Um, when I use basil, I usually have it with something that has a very plain background, you know, like a very simple pasta or a very simple rice. And then the basil is like the main thing that kind of shines out and brings it to life. Mm -hmm. um, and then also finely chopping it kind of spreads it out a little bit so it's not so kapoom, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the black sheep of the Italian family. <laughs> Maybe you ate too much of it growing up in the Italian family because there seemed to be a lot of basil in Italian cooking. A lot of basil, a lot of garlic. Parsley. Parsley. Oregano. Not a fan of garlic. Oh, really? I know. Yeah. What about oregano? You like oregano? Mm, very little. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm Swedish. I don't know. I was going <laughs> to say, are you, are you uh, Nordic at all? You look like a friend of mine who's Nordic. It came up in my ancestry that I was Italian and from, it was 8% from the, the Middle East. Oh. I question my relatives, you know, everyone's like going, no, what do you mean? We're all Italian. So, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> the secrets of the Italian family. Yeah. <laughs> or, or any family that, I mean, do we really know? It's true. Yeah. Especially <laughs> the, the World War II generation, they're kind of like the quiet ones. Well, yeah. Things they kept quiet and held in. Yes. We don't really know. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It's true. I do. I, I prefer uh, anything Asian. It really it helps my belly. I have no problem with Asian cooking and this kind of Ayurvedic food. No mm. problem. 
And do you like tamari or soy sauce on your food? Very little. Me too. Very little. Yeah, that I doesn't. I love tamari. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm happy about tamari since it has no gluten in it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I wanted to read you a little bit. Again, I'm sending this to you because I found it quite enlightening after years, you know, 20 years of studying this. And all of a sudden this morning, it hit me in a very different way. Hmm. Did you ever have a moment like that? Oh, yeah. You just, yeah. what? You know, uh -huh. so it was kind of like that moment. And the three things that you want to use in the Vata world when you're feeling your Vata become imbalanced is sweet, sour, and salty. Mm. Oh, I know that. And not mm -hmm. only for the taste, but also for how it activates prana. <clears throat> yeah. I found this so interesting because I never thought of it that way. So sweet and, and practice it, you know, see for yourself as yeah. a downward energy. Like if a downward flow, apana. So it's okay. very, uh, apana controls the downward flow of life force energy. Okay. And that would make sense that it would be calming to a vata, balancing to a vata. Mm. You want to go from your head and running around here and there. Right. Like a calm place, a grounding place. So sweet activates apana flow, which I think is pretty cool. And you spell that? Apana? A-P-A-N-A. -A -A. Okay, apana flow. And so does sour. Oh. And so does salty. Oh. <laughs> and so the seed of vata is the colon, which is downward. The colon is located down below, right? It's just very interesting that the flavors also then can create our emotional and mental state in a way that's balancing or not balancing. So interesting that if you're eating a lot of just say um, ginger, because you love ginger, you might find that you can't sleep at night. And that's because ginger creates energy. But for Vata, if you're already imbalanced, it's just gonna make you more nervous. And if you're nervous when you're trying to sleep, you're not gonna be able to sleep. Right. And then that causes all kinds of problems when you wake up. So you wanna stay away from pungent, bitter, and astringent. And you can remember this one way. Remember what you have to have versus what you don't. That might be the easiest way. Mm. Because pungent is anything that's going to be hot. Burning, ginger, garlic, peppers. Turmeric oh. is very heating. Yeah. You need a little bit of it, not a lot. And onions also are very burning. And bitter is going to make us dried out if we're already dried out as a vata. We don't want to have any bitter things. Because bitter mm -hmm. is a combination of that space and that air. Mm. Good for pitta. Uh, but not good for when our vata is imbalanced. So when you would say bitter, you would say lemon? Uh, a lot of lemon. A lot of lemon. You know, okay. well, no lemonade. A little bit of lemon is good. Oh, yeah. Unless, I, you're, unless you're inflamed. A little bit of lemon is considered sour. But just say you're overdoing it with lemon. You're mm -hmm. having lemonade. You're putting it on your salad because you like lemons. You overdo it. Then it's going to cause an imbalance. Okay. And try not to use the pipe. Oh, the citrus. That's the white side. That's oh, yeah. very 
that's very okay. trying, uh -huh. which is bitter. Mm. That's why if you're doing a zest, you always want to do the zest of the fruit before you get to the white, right? Yeah, yeah I just did that yesterday. And then the astringent, if you think of astringent, you think of black tea, coffee, fruit mm. that's not ripe, uh, wine. Those are astringents. Mm. And if you're already vata imbalance, you don't want to be more dried out like that. Mm. About tequila. <laughs> That's good. If I can't drink wine, how about tequila? <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> That's good. Uh, you know <laughs> beer would be better. What would be better? Beer? Yeah. Oh, beer? Beer. B E E R. Okay. E R. Hey, I'm not pushing alcohol. Oh, here. no. No, I don't, I don't know. I don't hear that. That's a separate class. <laughs> separate class. Separate class. But you know, wine is kind of a woman's thing. Women drink wine. And if mm. you're finding you're having trouble sleeping, uh, you're getting no, not good. Careful, nervousness, it could yes. be an intake of Yeah, I never wine. thought of that. Too much, that's all. Mm. A little bit is fine. It's it's when we go overboard that it's not fine. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. I never thought of the, the wine is stringent, but it is. You know, mm. if, you put, if you put up on your refrigerator some of these things, it'll start becoming more rote. Mm -hmm. Like you start to just know what to use. So I will send you these handouts for you. Hmm. You have it. I loved the uh, spice, the spices. I put it in my soup. I put it in my salad dressing, it's delicious. Do you like that spice? So that's a summer spice. Mm. You would not use that in the winter. Okay. It's a good summery one. See if Steven likes it. Mm. Good. It, is turmeric less heating if you mix it with like a golden milk? Because I heard like having the golden milk, you know, with the turmeric is really good to help you go to sleep. It's more it in the winter though, isn't it? If it's, when, it could be. If it's cow, I like that. cow's milk, Teresa, or? Oh, sometimes, or sometimes goat milk, sometimes coconut milk, um, sometimes almond milk. Well, what's nice about the milk. We try different things. Is milk is heavy and sweet. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, uh, you can kind of wrap yourself around in something like that. Yeah. It's easy and warm. So it can, it's, it's more overbearing than the turmeric. Mm -hmm. So it would be good. Unless you're finding mm -hmm. you're getting too mucusy, in which case you'd want to cut back on mm -mm. it. Yeah. I don't have the cough up problems. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have the vada problems and I have the pitta problems. I don't have the kapha problems. I'm okay with the kapha. <laughs> let, let me ask you. Speaking second. of wit. Yeah. What's, what's good for the eyes? Um, because, you know, I know, especially this time of year, I tend to get more like inflamed or irritated eyes. Uh, I know it's kind of a pitta thing too. Um, I mean, is it, I know I've heard like rose water and other things, but what do, what do you suggest? Are there like teas or special herbs that are really good for the eyes? Well, think about the eyes as being symptomatic of the organ that controls the eyes. Right, Debbie? What controls the eyes? What's, what's the organ? The, the liver. The liver. Your liver is hot when your eyes are getting irritated. Of course, the weather is not helping, right? And we're wearing glasses, and we're in front of this computer. And we're wearing masks. Wearing masks. And we're wearing masks, and we're doing a lot more Zoom and talking with people on Zoom and FaceTime because there's no other way we can see them. Right. Which I realize. And, li well, and liver's computer also. Computer the screen time is definitely irritating us. Liver's also the organ of anger. And we're picking up a lot of anger too. 
you know, we may not think we're angry, but the world is kind of hot and angry right now. Right. Yeah. A lot going yeah. on. Yeah, we're not hot and loving. We're hot and angry. Yeah. <laughs> so think about things that will cool the liver to help the eyes. But I like to use cucumber on my eyes, uh, green tea bags on the eyes. I remember you gave me that beautiful massage, Debbie, that time at your house, and you had the cucumber soaking in the green tea, I think. Oh, that was so delightful. Nice. I use lavender pillars a lot. Um, Yoga Nidra, I'll put a lavender pillar. And maybe when I talk, finish talking, Debbie, you can maybe show them a movement Qigong wise. Uh, I used to use Tripola, Teresa, faithfully, but I found that- As a tea or as an eye wash? As an eye wash. But now that I'm really in my Vata years, I find that it dries me out too much, so I don't use it. I've just been using the saline and the other thing. Yeah, I've noticed that with Trifola too, as a tea or whatever, it's very drying, or it's a little bit astringent too, and it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I've I, heard it's supposed to be good for many things with the eyes, but it was irritating to digestion and, and just very drying. And that's where our intuition is so key because mm -hmm. we hear, oh, triple is good, let's use it. But it may not be good for us mm -hmm. in the moment now. Right. You want to tap into your own wisdom. That's key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just use regular saline drops? I do. Plain? I do. And that, and what about fennel tea bags on the eyes? You know, that's a good idea. I, I haven't tried that. Are you having success? I, 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 I just feel very attracted to fennel for some reason, every possible way. Once it got hotter and humid, it's like there's something in me that's like, Where's fennel? I want fennel now. I need fennel. <laughs> it's like the smell of it, the look of it, it's just like, ah, fennel. Okay, I'm going to be saved by fennel. <laughs> so I, for some reason, I haven't I've heard of anyone trying fennel tea bags on the eyes, but somehow that seems like it's, I want to try it more than cucumber, actually. Yes, try it. Yeah. It's the only way to know. It's not going to hurt. Try it. Lately also, I've been on my liver meridian. I've been really rubbing in the liver and massaging and, and focusing my skin brushing more on my liver. Deb, what, what movement? Deb is a Qigong uh, practitioner, therapist. Well, I mean, any circulate, just circulating the body with shaking is good for the whole, you know, it's not just the one organ, it's all of them working in harmony. We want to regulate all of it. So just if you keep all the organs stimulate, uh, circulated, that's like your best bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and using and using the sound shh, like S H I T, but shh. <laughs> just the beginning part of that. Word. You, you would hold on. You would hold on to your liver, uh, which is on the right hand side. I'll go opposite mm -hmm. on your right hand side. And you just kind of scoop some energy and come over to the side. And so you're stretching away from the liver? You're stretching away from the liver, right. Okay. So it's coming through the hand and then goes into the liver, the sound. So the sound of S-H-I-I is the vibrational sound for liver. So that, that's something else that you can, you can do. Love that one. Thank, thank you. Where exactly is the liver meridian? Uh, it's it was right under underneath the right underneath the rib cage on the right side. That's the meridian. There is a meridian right there. Now, it depends on what time your liver kicks in. I believe. So sometimes I'm massaging it closer to my sternum and sometimes I'm massaging it more in the middle. And my cue is, where does it feel the most sensitive? And that's where I work it. 
because there's a little bit of tenderness if there's an imbalance, in my opinion. I'm no you know, expert on this. But if it feels a little sore, that's where I spend my time massaging. Debbie's going to look it up. I'm going to see if I can get a picture. Of and you, you do a circular massage? Or, I do. Or you, I can do. Even ta you can palpate it, too. You like can tap palpate. it, circle. Oh, I'm doing it now. If it's not too sore, I just hold my fingers in it. Oh, I just yeah. hold in it. Me too. For a few minutes and breathe. Here's the liver meridian. Can you see it? Hold it up a little bit. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, so it runs down there and down the inside of the leg and then to the big toe. Wow. Right. Down the inside of the right leg. It's, uh, it's well, it's both sides, really. It's both sides, but it's between the um, big toe and the toe next to it in the inside of the toe. And you so you can, pal you can massage that too. Like right wow, there. nice. Between the big oh, toe right and the here. toe next to it, like that fluffy tissue. Okay. Yep. Thank you. It feels no, it's not underneath the foot. foot. No, underneath the foot's the kidney meridian. Okay. Um, so really? it's on the top, between on the big the top, toe and the, the second foot, toe. On the top, right by the big foot where that kind of web. So just do the whole toe, do the whole toe of the big toe, the big toe. And then you can palpate, you could, you can just, um, you know, palpate, start from the, from the foot and then palpate all the way up to the liver. That's another thing you can do. And we can and probably follow inside the leg. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Manja, it's time to eat everyone. I ate it already. <laughs> How did you like it, Debbie? The I thought that it's I love the seasoning. I love the spice yeah. with the olive oil in the salad and I put it in my soup. And I'm gonna use that a lot for all my for, I think that's just a all around good spice to use on anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you separated the cucumber and the avocado oh, from the soup? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I have my avocado and cucumber. And then, mm. and I have my my soup. Mm -hmm. How do you like the soup? Soup's good. Good. My husband won't like it, but I like it. I'm gonna okay. put it over rice. Oh yeah, that would be yeah, great. Good idea. And what kind of rice do you like? Do do you do all the basa, uh, basmati rice? You know, lately I've been liking the short grain organic. Short grain. Basma, mm -hmm. which kind though? It's. Right. What kind? It's white. A oh, white. But basmati? No, it's a short grain, right? It's kind of like chubby. Hmm. Yeah, like jasmine? Sure. Like a jasmine rice? No. Mm, no. Just, it's white, just white rice. Short grain, white it's rice. Full short grain. grain. It's not long. It's short. Right. So yeah, I know. <laughs> it's short and chubby. <laughs> okay. I'll remember that. <laughs> the kapha rice. It's very kapha. It's very creamy. Yeah. It's it's great as rice pudding. That makes the best rice pudding. Oh, nice. Yeah, I have to, you know what, I'm dying. Now I have a taste for rice pudding. You steam it. It's the best. And do you use coconut milk or nut milk or when uh, you make I'm your not, rice pudding? I'm not vegan, I'm sorry. So I do use uh, cow's milk. Okay. I have not experimented with uh, nut milk with it. Okay. All right. Coconut milk, the, the, the whole coconut milk might be nice. I, I don't love use it. it because of cholesterol reasons. Uh, oh, all right. I have low cholesterol. That's why I have it. And it has more fat in coconut milk, and I need fat. Try it with coconut milk. I have had that in an Indian household, and it, mm. was, it was yummy. Mm, sounds good. Oh. Yeah, it does. So I want to thank you all for coming and yeah, thank you. Thank you for supporting the ashram. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. And Paula, thank you. I'd love to hear feedback. I'm sorry. Paula, I, I just remembered that I've taken yoga with you. I remember during the yeah. quarantine you were with me. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That. that was in the beginning of uh, the quarantine. 
That was the beginning. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank yeah. So everyone stay well and uh, I hope to see you all here. Thank you, Paula. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. And nice thank to all meet you. you. Nice, nice to meet everybody. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to see everybody. everybody. Cheers. Peace and blessings. Cheers. Yes. God's blessings. God's blessings. Thank you. Amen. Bye. Bye. Blessings. Bye. Stay well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.